Okay, so we're gonna show you guys how to do a maxillary nerve block. So uh, these were originally, the first paper on them was written by uh, Dr. Bernie Fletcher. He was the one that, that really helped to promote these and presented them at the AAP convention in Denver about 16, 17 years ago. Before that, uh, people had a lot of trouble with doing standing extractions because the sedatives alone uh, are not enough to, to make the horse stand still. They really have to be numb in order to do a lot of these standing surgeries that we're doing. So the most common uh, tooth to be pulled is the upper first molar. That's the one that we typically have the most problems with. And uh, so we're going to show how to do the maxillary nerve block for veterinarians out there that, that didn't uh, go over that while they were in vet school. So the landmarks here is we've got the frontal bone and the nasal bone. So we're going to draw a line right through here. And then we're going to draw another line perpendicular to that 90 degrees through the lateral canthus of the eye. Where we're going is the needle actually needs to go down into here, which is where we have the maxillary frame. And that's where the maxillary nerve is going to go in to the inforbital canal. And then eventually it will exit at the inforbital foramen. So our needle is gonna go, we're gonna draw a line through the frontal bone and the nasal bone. We're gonna go perpendicular to that in the lateral canthus of the eye. We're gonna go slightly below the facial crest all the way in um, to the maxillary nerve. Okay, so we're gonna put, we put that elevator along that frontal bone. And we're gonna, if we go through the lateral canthus, and now we're gonna come around and we'll show you that from the side here. So that's perpendicular, you can see here how this is 90 degrees, both elevators are 90 degrees to each other through the lateral canthus of the eye. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go about a centimeter or so underneath the facial crest right here, under that, that um, lateral canthus, and we're gonna go all the way in until we hit bone. So there's several things that you need to keep in mind when you're doing these. There's, there are other techniques. There's uh, a technique that came out of Germany, which is, injecting into the extra periorbital fat pad. Let, let's show you that. So watch what happens right here to the extra periorbital fat pad when I push in right here. You can see how, watch how this area right here kind of pooches up when I push in. Okay, so this fat pad that's behind the eye communicates with uh, that nerve, they're, they're very closely intertwined. So if we in inject into that, it will go into the nerve and that's a lot shallower injection. So some people like to do that because they feel like there's less chance of hitting the deeper blood vessels. There's a, a venous plexus that's really deep by the bone, by the nerve. And sometimes if the needle goes all the way in there, that will make contact and you can get a little bit of a hematoma. So some people prefer to do the German method where you go through the fascia uh, associated with the masseter muscle. And as soon as you go through that, then you can inject into the fat pad and that will diffuse into the, the nerve. Personally, in my experience, I do uh, hundreds of extractions a year and have been for a long time. And I feel like with that technique, it's not as effective. In my hands, I feel like maybe 60, 70, or um, 30 to 40% of the horses have to reblock again, whereas doing it the way I'm going to show you guys, it's a, I find it to be 100% effective. I can't remember the last time I had to reblock a horse using the method that we're going to show you guys. So during the prep, uh, because of the blood vessels uh, in that venous plexus, actually are anastomos with some of the blood vessels in the meninges, sterile prep or aseptic technique is very, very important. Uh, otherwise, one of the complications is you could get a septic meningitis, which could be fatal. And so uh, you want to use, I use a new bottle of uh, anesthetic every time. I prefer lidocaine. I use sterile gloves and I do a full prep, just like if I was going to inject a substance into a joint. The other thing is during the prep, during the scrub, it's important to have the horse's head up high. If the head is too low during the prep, that causes the blood vessels to distend. That makes it more likely that you're going to get a retrobulbar hematoma. The hematomas personally don't really concern me. Every now and then I'll, I will get a flashback of blood and I raise the head and I hold off pressure. Um, if you have one that swells a lot, it will look bad for a day or two, but they typically regress pretty fast. And as long as you hold the pressure here and here, right after you get a flashback, 
the, there's not that much swelling that occurs. So for me personally, um, the hematoma don't worry me. What I want my block to be is I need it to be effective um, and I need it to be effective pretty rapidly. The faster we do these surgeries and these procedures, the less anesthetics we have to use and the less complications we have associated with the, the procedure. So efficiency at every step of the way is critical for me. So I'll show you guys how we go ahead and scrub it and block it, and then we'll get it done and we'll go ahead and extract this too. So the prep area doesn't need to be huge if you're in the right place. You just need to be centered under the lateral canthus, under the facial crest. You can hear this horse is breathing a little bit heavy. He's got a sinus infection from a bad tooth. When I go to dental meetings, sometimes people sit here and, and talk for ever about uh, a nerve block like this. This is actually a very simple procedure. It's a little scary if you haven't uh, done one before, but I can tell you having done literally thousands of them, um, you know, knock on wood, I've never had a bad complication from a maxillary nerve block. A couple things, rarely I've had it happen less than a handful of times. Um, I think they can get a little bit itchy. So I have had a couple of horses over the years that went and rubbed their eye on, on something and they'll get a superficial corneal ulcer. It's very superficial, but they can be quite large. They typically heal really fast with just a little bit of um, triple antibiotic ointment in the eye. That's rare. Again, that's out of thousands. Um, the, the hematoma that can occur, that, that is also typically pretty rare, especially if you hold pressure, if you get a flashback. Uh, I think most of the problems that people have with this block is from poor technique. You have to be, you'll see, I'll show you how we do it, where I'm very direct, very efficient on where I go with the block. I don't poke multiple times. Um, and I get in and I get out. I use about 12 uh, cc's or 12 mLs of lidocaine, and that's enough to last for any procedure that I've uh, ever had to do. But, but you need to be in and out. The horse needs to be in a controlled, uh, well enough sedated that he's not moving around with a good block. And then after that, it's a great procedure. It's very effective, very safe, uh, and takes away all the pain. Uh, associated with anything on the upper dentition on that side. So I'm used to doing a lot of these by myself. I don't always have somebody helping me. So this is kind of how I do it. I use my sterile gloves. Use a three and a half inch 22 gauge spinal needle for the injection. I like 22 gauge. I don't like to use a bigger bigger gauge uh, because that can create a bigger hole if, if we go into the blood vessel for any reason at all. So doing it this way, I can pretty much do everything by myself. It is nice to have a person hold a horse, but again, um, I've done hundreds by myself and not had an issue as long as the horse is well sedated. You have to read, read the horse a little bit, make sure that the horse doesn't seem too spooky or too awake, uh, too uncomfortable. So if that's the case, address that before you go to do the nerve block. My final wipe, I want to make sure that everything looks clean on the alcohol. Okay, then I always brace my hands. So I put one finger below where I'm going to do the block, so I'm not touching, making contact with where the block is actually going to go. I visualize my line, and then I'll brace my hands together like this. That way, if the horse moves, he pushes me out of the way and I don't poke his eye by accident or anything like that. So I'm always bracing myself. So here, see how he moves? It doesn't matter, I'm, I'm braced. So 
and I hold the uh, syringe with the other needle away from myself. So we'll go in. I find the spot where I want to go, which is right here. And then I basically go all the way in until I hit bone. And I go pretty fast. There, I just hit the bone. And I can take my stylet out. And I'm going to put about 8 mils. And you can see how I'm going pretty fast. Put in eight mils right here. I'll back out a little bit and I'll put about three or four mils in here. I make sure that I'm not in a blood vessel. That looks great. And then just pull it out. So you can see how that whole process actually only took just a few seconds. Now, if I had gotten a flashback or aspirated and, and felt like I was in a blood vessel, don't panic. Just pull out maybe a quarter inch, aspirate again, make sure you're out of the blood vessel. Put the lidocaine in there and then raise the head and then put pressure right here on the extra periorbital fat pad and right here. And you can put really hard pressure for about, excuse me, about uh, five minutes or so. Uh, and just keep the head high. And you may get a little swelling right here that you can own the horse owner about, but you shouldn't have a lot. As long as you still have a divot right here, you won't get any protrusion of the eye. So that's, that's how to do the maxillary nerve block. Again, it's a very safe, very effective. Uh, excellent, excellent block. Don't be scared to do it. Uh, and you don't have to buy expensive, um, hard to come by blunt needles or anything of that nature. Literally, I've done thousands and thousands and uh, not had any problems with it. So good luck. Mm -hmm.